You can't see me. Chain gang. Hustle. Loyalty. Respect. The champ is here. What's up? This is Craig. Top 10 things WWE wants you to forget about John Cena. Let's check it out. John Cena is the franchise. He's the second most decorated world champion in history. He's superhumanly invincible, and he went to night school. Superman. Thugonomics. So that's nice. He's been the face <laughs> of the WWE for the better part of a decade, but even bulletproof John has had his moments of weakness. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are ten things WWE wanted to forget about John Cena. <laughs> Number 10, his finishing moves, old names. Today, John Cena's as corny a mainstream symbol of virtuous Americana as you can yeah, get. You. The only way he could be more American is if he started singing the national anthem whilst riding a bald eagle made out of the 1950s. He's a hero to children around the globe, which makes it even more surprising to casual fans that he used to be a naughty little boy. A very naughty little boy indeed. He would gay bash in delightful form of white rap, hit people with metal chains, and named his finishing moves after swears. The AA, the attitude adjustment, was once known as the A. You yeah, and the you. STF used to be the STF. You, if you don't know what either of those letters stand for, <laughs> congratulations. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Number nine, he spanked Stephanie McMahon on live I've TV, watched that no less. On Smackdown plenty of times. In 2003, naughty John Cena wrapped at current GM Stephanie McMahon. Now, Steph was going through her sexy, sexy phase at the time, wearing low-cut tops, doing sexy faces, and being felt up by ladies at Eric Bischoff's behest. Different uh, time. Anyway, Cena wrapped at Good Steph. times, man. Steph, why don't you let me smack that ass? Stephanie McMahon then bent over, and he spanked her on global TV while she was working for her dad's company. That's weird. Considering Cena's current relationship with the Authority, I don't think they want Cena's high-speed grocery to be remembered. Number eight, Bull Buchanan. No, I don't remember either. Bull Buchanan has always been the other guy. He was the other guy when partnered with the Big Boss Man, the other guy when part of Right to Censor, and he was the other guy when partnered with Albert, who himself was the other guy when partnered with Test, who himself was the other guy when partnered with Booker T. It's a vicious hierarchy and bulls at the bottom. He teamed with then heel John Cena as B squared, and it never really works. He just I don't remember. Remember that? Hip hop. Sorry, Paul. Wow. Number seven, Mickey James. In 2009, Mickey James and John Cena got it on, I guess. For a few weeks, WWE aired vignettes of James and Cena getting their nervous flirt on. It was all a bit awkward, but sort of endearing, kind of maybe cute. Except when Cena would hand her, her panties like one air saying, You left these last night. Prince Charming, everybody. So far, so much. Yeah, I don't know. Really <laughs> ham fisted romance. But what was weird about the segments was how they ended. You got the impression that WWE were building to something, but no. The vignettes just stopped. Rumors abound that they were dating in real life and it ended, so it ended on screen too. Either way, it's a weird tiny micro relationship and it's never been mentioned since. Number six, ruining the nexus. From Bray Wyatt to Dolph Ziggler, John Cena's been accused of hindering a star's momentum in much the same way that a brick wall hinders a car. No one felt this They messed that up. I'm so mad. They, they messed that up. Rag him up and he tried to murder everybody on the WWE roster. The nexus were white hot in the WWE yep. and were riding all the momentum in the world going into SummerSlam 2010. It was Team Nexus versus Team WWE. John Cena was the last man surviving for his team. He took a DDT on the concrete, then came back to pin Justin Gabriel and Wade Barrett for the win. It was a classic case of Super and Cena making his opponents look over. Foolish. Chris Jericho, Momentum, even Cena himself gone. Had gone on record saying that the way the match ended was a boneheaded decision, yep. damaging to the rookies' careers and something Cena wants to put behind him. Yeah, I remember Number that five, interview. Ready to rumble. Hey, remember when David Arquette won the WCW Championship? Of course you do, it helped kill the company. All of that absolute applesauce was to promote a movie called Ready to Rumble about Arquette and his pal being a pair of clown shoe wrestling fans. Had DDP in it, it had Goldberg in it, and hey look, Booker T, Billy Kidman, and it's that John Cena? In a scene featuring Oliver Platt and Goldberg in a wrestling gym, you can see training in the background a dyed blonde, 22 year old little Johnny Cena. Die. My phone died! Die. Let's continue! Let's continue the video! Die. Championship, of course you do, it helps you. Better better better. Jump that absolute applesauce was to promote a movie called Ready to Rumble about Arquette and his pal being a pair of clown shoe wrestling fans. Had DDP in it, had Goldberg in it, and hey look, look at T, Billy Kidman, and it's that. John Cena in a scene featuring no, right Black and Goldberg in a wrestling gym. You can yeah, see blonde, yeah. in the background a dyed blonde, 22 year old little Johnny Cena. It was filmed in the gym where Cena was training to be a wrestler, so he took on a role as an extra. Turns mm. out the face of the WWE first surfaced in a WCW joint. Poor shame. How about that?
Number four, he can't protect his dad. John Cena's dad, John Cena Sr., that's hard to say, has actually had experience in the wrestling biz, working as a manager for some independent shows in Boston. So while a lot of wrestlers' family members like to stay out of the spotlight, hmm. John Cena Sr., Cena, John Cena Sr., Sr., has been dragged into it by his hair. Edge went to the Cena family home in Boston and slapped the middle-aged man around. He was famously punted by yep. Randy Orton, and John Cena's dad even had a match with Randy Orton on Raw. Spoilers, it didn't end well for Pops. Orton even attacked Cena Sr. last year. Now, I'm not saying yep. that John is a bad son for putting his dad in harm's way. I'm just going to imply it. Then move on. Number three, he was a bad friend to Zack. Poor Zack Ryder, the guy got himself over without help from anyone via his popular YouTube show Z, True Long Island Story. Ryder got himself noticed by the fans based purely on his charm and never say die doofus optimism. The fans demanded a push for him and WWE crowned him the US champion. Then, a John Cena storyline happened to him. Zack got embroiled in the Embrace the Hate storyline, which saw him lose his championship due to a rib injury from Kane, we chokeslam through the stage, tombstone, confined to a wheelchair, and forced yeah. to watch Eve, a lady who on it. kissed John Cena. That is bad form, John. He was utterly humiliated in the view designed to put over Cena and no one else. His rising star was caught and crushed. And <laughs> that was so funny. All the way home. Do, 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 do. I remember two, it. He got kayfabe stabbed. What? Carlito was a man who spat in the face of people who didn't want to be cool. Also, when he debuted in 2004, he had a body card called Jesus. As part of the storyline on Carlito's wishes, Jesus stabbed Cena in a nightclub, which is attempted murder. That's, that's attempted murder. Did Cena call the cops? Nope. He challenged Carlito to a wrestling match, because that's nature's only true justice. Cena beat Carlito, and the whole literally trying about it. to kill him thing was put behind him. John Cena is oh, very that. forgiving. And number one, five knuckle shuffle is slang for wanking. That's what the phrase means. Five knuckle shuffle means masturbation. Hey kids. Really? So that's our list. Did you agree? Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share, I know, but subscribe, and like follow that. me on Twitter. Yeah. I'm I Adam didn't from know what com, and I'll see you soon. I ain't know I meant that. Maybe I'm the only person that didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Most of them I knew about. But the, the, the whole thing about him getting stabbed, storyline, I didn't know that. Or about uh, the, that right there. I don't hate on John Cena. I'm not a John Cena hater. I'm just tired. I'm not a John Cena hater. I'm just tired of the same old thing. I mean, because everybody's changed up. The Stone Cold became a heel. Even though he regretted it, he did it. The Rock changed up constantly. I mean, all the greats changed. Hulk Hogan came to here, and that became the biggest thing ever. Now, I mean, he, he he's diminished a lot when it comes to popularity. I believe so. So I think it will be the perfect time now or two more years down the road for him to possibly turn heel. That's just my opinion. What do you think? He's liked by too many kids. Yes, he is liked by too many kids, but I think... They just got to take a chance. I mean, I think their ratings would skyrocket, and, and who knows? Who freaking knows? I don't know. I've been a WWE fan since my childhood. Don't see that changing no time soon. Yeah, but this is Craig. That Craig. Comment, share, subscribe. Help me reach my goal of 5,000 subscribers. And always, stay on your grind.